And so that brings us to our third point today about being the guy. We want to bring the most potential out of our kids, bring grit out of our kids. We have to also be the guy. Everyone loves to be the hero. I love being the hero. I dreamt of it as a kid. Now that I'm a dad, I love being my kid's hero. And I want to be their hero forever, and I'm sure you do too. But I'm also realistic, and I know that every night that I lay my child down in their bed and I give them a kiss and pray with them at night, I know that I'm one day closer to losing that hero status. I don't mean to make you sad, but we all know it's true. And so how do we stay the hero as we go on? I think we all want that. And I would submit to you that the way that we stay the hero is to become a great guy. So what I want to show you is, is uh, this picture here of what these people have in common. I mean, technically, they're all guides, not heroes. I mean, they're heroic, but they're not the hero. Harry Potter is the hero, not Gandalf. Daniel Russo is the hero, not Mr. Miyagi. Neo is the hero, not Morpheus. Luke Skywalker is the hero, not Yoda. Why do we know these people so much and why do we love them so much that we see on the screen here? Because they assist the main character in becoming the hero of their story, to becoming the solution to the problem. The great pass on the soccer field is almost more admirable than the goal itself. The other thing we know about these people is they didn't snowplow the way, they didn't fix it for anyone. They always allow the hero to experience the pain, to make their choices, to have the difficulty, to go through their struggle, to triumph on their own without being in front. And they all do it with them. Mr. Miyagi could have easily beat up those bullies in the first scene of the movie and said, if you do it again, I'm gonna beat you up again. And it would have been over, no movie. All movies have conflict, right? All stories have conflicts that heroes have to overcome and they need a guide to do it. And our kids are no different. So how do we be that guide? I want to show you something that was adapted from Learner Lab podcast about the levels of growth mindset and use this as an example for us. And the first thing to help us do that is that we have to help kids understand the desirable difficulty is what we want. It takes struggle to grow. In a microwave society, nobody wants to struggle. My son says to me all the time, dad, I just want it to be easy. I hope this math problem is really easy. And I say, son, if it was easy, then you wouldn't be learning and you wouldn't be growing. We want it to be hard so that you can learn more and grow more. If it's easy, then we know we got to move on. And he's eight, nine. He gets that. Right? We need struggle to grow. In the weight room, if I put five pound weights in my hand and start lifting, we know we're not going to do it. We're going to be wasting time. Just like if I put 300 pounds on the bar and that's way too much, it's going to crush me. Somewhere in the middle of that is the desirable amount of difficulty that it takes to grow my body and to build my muscles and to improve my health. And that's desirable because we want that effect. And we really have to help kids understand. And as a guide, as a great guide, what we can do is help them understand, no, that difficulty is important. Don't run from that. Don't quit because it's hard. Or you know that's gonna be difficult. You should still try it. Who cares if you mess up? We'll try again. Desirable amount of difficulty is the key to helping us understand to be gritty, resilient, and to have a growth mindset. Second, everything takes time. Microwave society, if you're not good at it, you just quit, right? We know that and you've seen it in your kids. You maybe even feel it in yourself sometimes. Maybe we even say it. Well, I guess I'm not good at bowling. I guess I can't do that. It takes time to build new skills. We have to remind kids it's okay for things to take time. Right, to invest in something that's going to be difficult over time. Three, building skills requires reps in action. You have to opt in to the time it takes to do those difficult things if we want to grow and we want to change. And again, these are things we have to teach our kids because these thoughts and these levels don't come naturally anymore. The flow of society doesn't want these things to be natural. They want you to feed what you're good at only put it in a silo and stick with it. And if you're not, that's a fixed mindset idea. That's what society's built on. I know that if I want to get more fit, I can learn a lot from going on Instagram and looking at social influencers who have all those great fitness videos. Oh, that would be a great workout for my glutes, right? That would be a great ab workout. But we also know 
that we have to stop watching the video and start doing the work if we want to do it. That takes time and that's going to be difficult. We have to plan things for that. But if we want to change, we have to do it. We can't just watch and learn and talk about it. And we have to remind kids that it's okay to get your hands dirty and get into stuff. That's going to be messy and it's going to be difficult. We have to start to change that norm in our households and in our communities. And I'll tell you what, the last thing is we got to remember that they need those reps, not us. We go back to snowplow where we can see those things ahead of time. We can provide those answers ahead of time. We can do that. And we got to be really careful as the leaders in their lives, not to bail them out and create a victim mentality, right? When we come out of a tough game, the one thing we can say to make our kid feel better so they're not so sad, hey, those refs, they really didn't know. You shouldn't have got this. You shouldn't have got that. We got, you know, we got screwed by that official. Well, the coach didn't have a good lineup out there. Right? We can create that mentality by trying to make them better, trying to make them feel better. And we can't do that. We have to allow them to sit in that desirable struggle for a little bit of time. Right? They have, we have to allow them in there and let them opt into that. And we can't fix it for them because that's not what great guides do. No guide in any of these situations fixed it for the hero. Without these guides, our story heroes would not have done what they did to make the world a better place. It wouldn't have happened. These people were essential. Emphasizing these levels of building a growth mindset faithfully over time might not make your child happier in the moment. It doesn't make mine happier, I'm going to tell you that. But every single problem that they bring to you, you can probably refer right back into those three levels. So that, that PDF document that you can download, I'd encourage you to do so. So you can have a, a visual representation of these levels for you to remember and teach your children about. And in a microwave society, success might not come so quick right away if we're going to allow them to be in their struggle. Like I said, Miyagi could have fixed it, but he let Daniel go through this whole series of events to get to that point. He didn't do it for him. But because they do that, we give them the chance at the big payoff, the chance to become the best most resilient version of themselves. You know, we see these people as heroes, really. When I put this up, you probably saw them or thought of them as heroes. They are heroic and truly they are heroes. If you're the guide faithfully for long enough, you become the hero. And what a great sense of calm that gives me as a parent to know that although I'm not going to be the hero anymore, I can still be the guide long enough and faithfully enough that they'll see me that way. And that's all I can ask. Jeff Mannion, the pastor at Ada Bible Church, says doing small things faithfully over time is the big thing. These guides are heroic because they do these things over time and empower their hero to take control of their story. If we want to, to, uh, if we want to stay the hero to our kids, we have to become the guide. It's going to be hard to be next to them when we're used to being in front of them, trying to make them happy and protecting them. I submit that the difficulty of leading them to this, to this place next to them is, is a difficulty that's desired. And so when we went hiking, we chose the vertical path, the difficult path. And we were super motivated. We were excited. Wow, this is great, challenging, fun. But soon, we kept coming around the corner and seeing this, another stack of straight up in the air hiking. We had already done it. And you look at your watch and you think, oh, we got to be almost to the top. No, wait, we're only 0.6 miles of that 2.1, and we're just this tired. What are we doing? And we're grinding it, going step by step, trying, 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 and it's difficult. And you know what's crazy is, is I'm sitting there grinding my way up the path. I see this guy come flying up past me. He's not walking, he's running. You seen these people? They run these hiking trails. And what I thought at that time was Merzenich told me that my skills can always be improved, that my, that my abilities were, were always higher than what I thought, than my ceiling. And I thought to myself, you know what, this guy, at some point, he was grinding out the walk. He was watching somebody else run. And now he's running. I mean, he's able to do that and run up 
And I thought it makes sense because at the top, at the top, there's a payoff. And if we keep staying with it and we keep going, we're going to get better at those skills and there's going to be a payoff, right? There was a sense of well done. You can see the city of Phoenix. It was beautiful. One of the highest points in Phoenix. It was well worth it. We did our best. We had this sense of we made it. We accomplished something. It was a race well run. There would have been nothing wrong with 180 feet of elevation. It was positive. It was fine. It was a hike. It would have been great. But man, the 1,200 feet was well worth the struggle. And I can't guarantee you that my kids are going to be perfect or the most resilient just because I know this information. And I can't guarantee that yours will be either. But I know that I want to go through the struggle it will take for me to lead in this way. So there's a chance at the big payoff. Because if I can give them the best chance, to bring forth their potential. I feel like that's the job well done. And I think because you're here today, that you feel the same way.